Do you need to send data from Bubble to another app that doesn't currently have a Bubble plugin? Luckily for you, you're in the right place, and we have Zapier. No plugin, no problem. Welcome back to Josh No Code, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to send data from Bubble.io to Zapier. Uh, the most common use case for this kind of Zap is that you have um, a Bubble application and you want to send data to another app. Uh, but that app currently does not have a plugin directly with Bubble, so you'll need to integrate your Bubble app with Zapier so that you could send data from Bubble to Zapier and then to another external data source. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on uh, to follow more of my content. And today we're going to be setting up a zap that detects whenever a new workflow in Bubble is triggered. I'm going to show you exactly how to configure your Bubble application, uh, how to set up your data type, how to uh, set up the plugin, and uh, we're also going to set up a form on Bubble, which is going to basically act as our data source and we are going to set up a workflow to send the data over to Bubble. Uh, and once we do that, I'll show you how to set up the trigger on Zapier. And finally, we're going to be performing some end-to-end -end testing to make sure everything is working right. Um, and in my next video, I plan on showing you how to send data back from Zapier to Bubble. With that said, we will see you in Bubble, in our Bubble application editor. And full disclosure, you need a paid Bubble account in order to use the Zapier plugin. If you have a free account, it's just not going to work. So make sure you have a paid account. So the first thing we need to do is expose our public API endpoints. So head over to the API tab and then make sure enable workflow API and back end workflows is selected. And you're going to want to select enable data API as well you will see a privacy warning. Make sure to read that well, and then uh, select got it. You'll see your types listed here, uh, and make sure you select the ones that you want to expose. The one we're going to be creating shortly is not here, but we're going to go back here and make sure that is selected, selected when uh, we create it. So let's then head over to data and let's create a new type called customer. We're going to add a few text fields here. So let's just add name, make that a text. Let's add phone for the customer's phone number. We'll make that text as well. And let's add email for the customer's email. And we'll make that text field as well. So this is our type and these are the fields we need for this example. We're now going to head over to the design tab. We are going to set this uh, index page, the type of content we want to make it uh, customer. And once we do that, we're going to want to create a new group for our form. So let's make this group. We'll make it, uh, we'll change the background color just so we could see where we're working. So we'll just make it this color. make it a little bit bigger that looks good and we are going to title this uh, this form customer request form and we're just going to change up the font a little bit make it a little bit bigger Okay, so this is our form title. Now let's just add a few text, uh, which will sit above our uh, inputs. So we'll just make this one name. Um, we'll just format it a little bit here. Okay, that looks good for now. So we'll have name for the customer's name. We'll have the phone number. So we'll just make that phone and we will have uh, we'll also have the email 
So that's good. Now let's go ahead and let's add our inputs. We're going to need to format it. So we'll remove the style. Make the background white and there we go. So for this first input, we're gonna have input name. So we'll just have input name, make the placeholder name. Copy paste, make this one input phone. And last but not least, we will have an input for the email. Great. So let's just now spread this out a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer. All right, so let's just make these inputs a little bit wider. And that looks good. Now let's just add uh, two buttons here, or just one button, and we will just make it a submit button. Great, looks good. And now what we're going to want to do is we're just gonna set up an element that uh, basically just displays as a, as a success message. So we'll just copy and paste this button right here. And we will just call this um, success. And we'll change up the color here just so it's a, a green light color so we know that it successfully, uh, our form successfully submitted. And we're just gonna go over the layout here and make sure this element is, uh, is not visible on page load, so we'll uncheck that really quick. And now um, I just remembered the next thing we, just, we have to do is let's go back into settings, go into API. You're going to see that the, for the enabled data API, let's check off customer because that is the type that we want to expose. So let's go back uh, to design. Uh, this all looks good right now. We have the uh, name, phone, email. And um, before we set up our workflow, let's make sure to set up the plugin. So we'll go over to plugins and now we will look for Zapier and we'll go ahead and we will install Zapier. Okay, so um, I have, I had a previous trigger for our form, so I'm just gonna, I deleted that. Um, and now the first thing you need to do is you, you're going to need to name your trigger. So let's call this, um, you know, customer request form new. Uh, and then for the trigger type, make sure to select your type. So we're gonna select customer. And now we're going to want to head back to the design tab and we're going to start our workflow here. So let's uh, uh, select submit before we do that. Let's actually just make this type of content customer. So let's uh, click on the submit button, start edit workflow. And the first thing we need to do here is let's create a new thing. We're going to create a new customer. We're gonna set the fields uh, email is input, input emails value uh, for name. It's going to be input, input names value. And for the phone, it's going to be input phones value. Okay. So that's good. So that's going to create a new customer in um, our type customer. So that's great. And the next thing we want to do here is we're going to want to trigger a uh, Zapier zap. 
So that comes from the plugin. And you're going to want to make sure that your Zapier trigger, um, basically the Zap, Zap trigger that you created previously on the plugin screen, it's gonna show up here and you're going to want to have that selected. So customer re request form new, just select that. And data thing for our example, we are going to want to send the customer, the data from the customer submission on the form. And so that's just gonna be the result of step one, create a new customer. Okay, and the last thing that we're going to do here is we're just gonna go over the element actions and we are just going to show that success message. And so let's just select it. Okay, so this is the basic workflow that we need to send uh, our data from Bubble to Zapier. So let's go ahead and let's make a submission here. So I will just make a submission, Josh Jackson, put my phone number and then email. So that's good. So it runs, but it says that uh, the zap you tried to trigger has no active zaps. That's okay, that's completely fine. Um, that is an expected response when you're setting this up. So no need to get worried or anything. Uh, so next, let's head on over to Zapier. Now we're going to create the uh, trigger that's going to detect whenever a new workflow is triggered in Bubble. So let's go ahead, let's just name this zap. We'll call it send uh, data from Bubble to Zapier. And let's search for our Bubble app. Let's add an event. The event that we're adding is new workflow trigger event. This is an instant trigger. It's gonna trigger when a bubble workflow, including the plugin action is kicked off. So let's select that. Click on continue and add our account. Next, let's select our app ID. Our app ID is integrate bubbles app your app. Let's select that. And for app version, we have the development environment only, but if you have an app that is deployed to production, you will see that option as well. So we select development and next select your zap ID. So this is the name of the zap that you created in the zap your plugin in bubble. So we see the name of our zap, it's customer request form new. We will select that. And next, let's text, test our trigger. Let's test again. Okay, so don't know why the first time didn't work, but when we test it again, we found a bubble zap, which is great. We could see all the information. This is from the form that we submitted. We have the modified date. We have the created date. We have the created uh, by, you know, the user, the idea of the user. And we have the email, the name, uh, the phone, and also the idea of the zap. So this is all the information we got from the form, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted to do. And just for uh, the sake of this example, we're going to just send this data um, via email. So we will just send this information via a email through Gmail. And let's just set that up really quick because we just wanna make sure that this works end to end. So I'll just put in my email, hello, joshnocode.com and let's just make this uh, from we'll select my email josh jackson and we'll do new customer request you have a new customer request let's add the information here name email, phone. Great. So that's all good. Go ahead, just test this out. 
and let's go ahead it sent the email let's go ahead publish this zap because we want to make sure that it works end to end okay so our uh, zap is now live so here we are back at our form and we want to just make sure that this uh, whole thing is working correctly so let's make another uh, submission through this form let's see if we receive the email and if we receive the email with all the information from this form then we know that we successfully sent our data from uh, from bubble to Zapier okay so just make this John Smith Add a phone number here. Let's just add our email. And we will click the submit button. Okay, so now we see the success message. Success, so we know the form was successfully submitted and we did not get that error message that we got before. Uh, so let's go to our email and see if we received the email. So we now see the new customer request. We see uh, the all the information that was submitted from the form. Uh, we have the name, we have the email, we have the phone number. And uh, now we know we could successfully send information from Bubble to any other external data source. Um, alternatively, if the app is not supported, uh, by Zapier, you could set up a webhook as well. And there are other options as well for custom API integration um, through uh, Bubble. So those are your other options as well. Uh, but I hope that this tutorial has been helpful if you're trying to get data out of Bubble to another source and here's a way to do it with Zapier. So if you like this video, make sure to, of course, give it a like and uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel to follow some more uh, tutorials, more videos. And in our, our next video here, what we plan on doing is we plan on showing you how we can make requests to bubble um, from Zapier. Uh, and you know, we could, we'll show you how we could create new things, how we could modify things in the database. We'll show you how to trigger in, um, a workflow API uh, in Bubble. And uh, that's gonna be the content for the next video. So make sure to, to watch that whenever it comes out. And other than that, let me know if you have any questions uh, about this tutorial. And uh, I'll, you know, I'll look forward to responding to that. And uh, also, if you have any ideas for future videos, would love to hear it in the comments section. So guys, thank you so much again, and we will see you very soon.